The main sensation of the last time, the horror film Long Legs, which is setting records for the collections, could not stay out of the sphere of my attention, and I expect to talk about the movie a lot and tediously. However, I propose to start by discussing the most obvious thing, with the attitude to which I still haven't decided. The fact is that Long Legs is very similar to The Silence of the Lambs, so much so that some details in the new movie are copied almost verbatim. Good or bad, we'll decide at the end, but for now let's note the main parallels between the two thrillers. Just in case, I will remind you that the movie Long Legs. Agent Lee Harker is investigating several serial murders with very strange common features. Whole families are killed. Intuition leads a young woman to the monstrous conclusion that she is somehow connected to the killer and perhaps even the cause of the brutal crimes. It is too early to put the picture on a par with Jonathan Demme's masterpiece, but both films demonstrate the ability to penetrate into the darkest corners of the human psyche to make the viewer afraid for the characters and for themselves. However, these are general words. Let's understand the specific connecting threads that unite the two worlds. The main characters are FBI agents. The first thing that catches your eye is the very similar protagonists of the two movies. Both serve in the FBI, both are not experienced enough to handle important cases, both are not too cozy in a male team. From a plot point of view, this is the best way to show the difficulties that a newcomer to the profession has to overcome. However, both Clarissa Starling and Lee Harker demonstrate extraordinary strength and undaunted will, moving towards the goal of the investigation. They continue to fight for justice, even when they find themselves under threat. We have before us two outstanding characters ready for any challenge. It is no coincidence that Clarissa Starling has become a role model for many girls who choose to work in law enforcement. Lee possesses the same skill set as her colleague. The girls are mentored by outstanding mentors. Mentoring is an important aspect of character building for the protagonists of the two films. Clarissa Starling is taken under his wing by the head of the Behavioral Sciences Division of the FBI, Jack Crawford. Experience and knowledge of the head gave confidence to the young trainee in the investigation of Buffalo Bill. He also helped the girl avoid many of the traps and dead ends surrounding the maniac's crimes. This help became an invaluable aid in the development of Starling's intuitive skills. In The Gatherer, Lee has her own mentor, Agent Carter. The FBI division chief lets his mentee show her hidden characteristics, providing her with all the details of the puzzle known to the police. But Carter doesn't leave Harker alone with a string of murders. He helps her interpret the data and develop the confidence to approach the most important decisions. Standout Villains The author of any detective thriller tends to come up with the most brutal villain, but the killers from Silence of the Lambs and long legs impress even viewers accustomed to everything. Hannibal Lecter demonstrates a special, intelligent evil. He is well-bred, has exquisite taste, he has a brilliant education and has experience as a surgeon. But, on the other hand, he is a skillful manipulator, a cruel cynic, and a cannibal. A true symbol of modern intellectual society. Long legs is another side of the universe, his element is religiously apocalyptic fear, largely irrational and abstract. Hence the symbols, the ciphered letters, the confused speech, all of which is made all the more frightening by the complete lack of understanding of the maniac's goals. At the same time, he knows how to manipulate people as well as Lecter. Getting entire families to kill each other is worth our awe. Victim Detection an extremely important part of the general atmosphere of horror become in two movies scenes of detection of victims. In The Silence of the Lambs, Starling finds a body mutilated to the point where even seasoned police officers are shocked. The viewer immediately becomes clear how cruel the maniac is and how much this investigation will hit Clarissa's psyche. Each new victim is another detail of Buffalo Bill's past and a new step leading to the basement of his mind. Starling plunges into the darkness of the monster's mind, and by doing so makes the viewer watch with bated breath. Lee Harker is equally shocked to realize how strong the manipulation skills of the target are. It's hard to get one's head around the level of outside influence driving one to kill one's own family. Both monsters sow fear as they demonstrate their atrocities. 
But the higher the stakes in the investigation, frightening clues, both movies tenaciously hold the viewer to the screen with the sinister clues left by the villains. It may seem that these are just made-up facts saved to advance the plot, but the trouble is that in reality maniacs are as greedy for fame as they are in the movies. So the gifts that Hannibal sends to Clarissa, including her head, can very well be seen as realistic plot moves. The purpose of such clues is an attempt to draw the investigator deeper into the mad world of the killer. Well, and to scare the viewer along the way. In Long Legs are letters to the police and postcards personally Lee. By them the Ripper intends to bring Harker out of himself and return to his bosom voluntarily. In addition, we should not forget about the mysterious metal balls hidden inside the dolls. Also a kind of guiding thread leading to the discovery of the terrible truth. Escape of the villain. According to all the laws of dramaturgy, in both films, violent criminals at some point manage to escape from the clutches of the police and disappear. In silence. This happens in a brilliant scene of Lecter escaping from a cage under the watchful eye of security. The ingenious plan, which worked flawlessly, reminds the viewer of just how cruel and calculating a mind Clarissa is up against. Now he's on the loose, and anything is to be expected. The Long Legs also manages to escape the trap organized by Lee and her team. This escape, the chances of which were very small, raised the stakes, added tension, showed what a slippery opponent Harker got. And most importantly, in addition to the new victims, the detectives themselves are now in danger. Childhood trauma. Both main characters, although they work for the FBI, are in fact vulnerable individuals with unhealed childhood traumas. Starling is haunted by the memory of the slaughter of lambs that came to her attention at a tender age. It is this silence of the lambs that drives the agent to search for the kidnapped girls. A seemingly insignificant detail from the past, but it gives depth to the character, demonstrates her insecurity, and moves the movie from the genre of the usual thriller to the category of psychological. In turn, Lee in her own past discovers a connection with a maniac, which she tried to forget all the following years. Harker has to re-immerse herself in childhood horrors to calculate the consequences of that sinister encounter with a stranger on a snowy lawn, which her mother managed to interrupt. The final confrontation is in the villain's lair. As befits a detective with a police investigation, both pictures lead agents and viewers to a chilling denouement. Both heroines find themselves in the lair of a maniac and finally physically feel the horror that previously figured solely in their minds. Clarissa finds herself in Buffalo Bill's basement, a creepy, dark labyrinth that seems to suck all the strength out of its victim. The viewer, along with the heroine, is plunged into a claustrophobic nightmare that separates life from death. Lee, in turn, infiltrates the abode of her stalker and is horrified by how much he has in common with her. The monster's isolated sanctuary locks Harker alone with her own demons, which culminates in an explosive acceptance of the terrifying truth about the nature of the haunted evil. If anyone is interested in my opinion, I see nothing wrong with such similarities and parallels. After all, dramaturgical theorists generally reduce all works to four main themes, the rest are variants and variations. For me, the main thing is the feeling of immersion into the eerie world of someone else's fantasy, where I am led by the hand through the flashes of nightmarish images and frightening events. It's how I relax. So long legs, I am satisfied with, perhaps even will occasionally revisit, just as I did, The Silence of the Lambs. I won't put the two movies next to each other, but they don't make movies like they used to. Times are different. And we will definitely look back to the past to compare it with the present and the future, but in other materials. For now, I want to switch to other movies and series, because so many interesting things have come out. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the comments.